Hello everybody, and welcome back to the beautiful world of Prometheus. Today, as always, we have a number of chores on our list to take care of. Definitely ignore the fact that I have a broken bone right now. I definitely did not almost fall to my death trying to make it to the top of this waterfall for the intro sequence. Do not worry about it. Um, but before we get into it, I also want to say thank you to everybody who's subscribing to the channel. We are almost at 500 subscribers right now, which is just absolutely crazy to me. Thank you so much for sticking with me, enjoying the game. I certainly know I'm enjoying it. Icarus is one of my favorite games, and I can't get enough of it. And it sure seems like a lot of people out there like watching people play through the game as well. So I'm happy that you're here along for the journey. And let's get into today's episode. So in the last part, we got our electricity set up. You can see over there we have our two water wheels spinning for us, getting us 4,000 power. That's sufficient for now. Right now we only have the electric furnace and the materials processor. Together these take exactly 4,000 power. Um, but if you're not using them both at the same time, we have some surplus power anyways. So, with that taken care of, we are now able to work towards getting ourselves a chemistry bench that requires 10 composites, as well as the organic residue cleaner, which requires 15 composites. So, we're going to need to get some composites crafting up in this fancy new material processor here. Let's get that going. For the composites, we're going to require some iron ore, silica ore, organic resin and gold, which I believe we have everything we need for that. Maybe we don't have organics. We have 54. Um, let's just go ahead and get up enough composites for those two crafting benches and see where we go from there. All right, and just like that, we have our 25 composite pastes crafting up. We're going to need to stick those in our fancy new electric furnace to actually get them cooked for us, but with that taken care of, let's take a look at what we need next here. So, 20 electronics, um, some refined wood, some steel, and then for this, 5 more electronics, that's a total of 25, 10 titanium, and then 30 platinum sheaths, which is quite a bit of platinum. I don't know if we have enough for that right now, but we'll take a look into our stores. And then the other thing that I'm seeing here that's going to be a little bit difficult is shaped obsidian. So, like those deep vining mains that we found for the titanium and gold, you can find a obsidian deep vein pretty much anywhere on Prometheus. We have a storm coming in. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been lucky enough to find one of those. So I'm thinking the only way for us to actually get obsidian right now is to actually go deep into the volcanic biome next to the lava in that area and use a sledgehammer to actually break that obsidian and bring it home. So, that is going to be quite a task. I'm going to have to think about what we're going to do in terms of getting that obsidian. Uh, but before we do that, let's take a look inside Shelter from the Storm. Let's take a look at our talents, see what we have going on here. So I'm actually pretty partial to this perk right here, Sweet, Savory, Satisfied. That extra 10% duration on the food buffs is very nice. So I think I'm going to work toward that for our next sort of goal in the solo tree. So for now, let's go ahead and grab Bounce Back. That'll give us some health regen. Useful for those times when you fall off the top of waterfalls and almost die. And then our next solo point, we're going to go ahead and grab that. For our main skill tree over here, I'm going to go ahead and grab the third point in weathering the storm. Especially if we get caught out in an ash storm in the volcanic biome, you know, this is going to be extremely useful to us. Make sure that we can get to safety, have a little bit of an easier time escaping storms and severe weather events. Then, for the remainder of our points here, I think I definitely want to start working toward fresh is best here. So we're going to need a couple more points in this tree. I'm going to grab naturally preserved 
one more point in that. That'll give us a really nice 50% rate of food spoiling buff there. And then I'm also going to grab long lasting effects right here. That's one more point in that tree. We might end up maxing this out. Um, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and grab Fresh's Best. And I believe when we have this tree at maximum level, we should be able to go from here into uh, the Food Pyramid skill as well. So that'll give us an extra slot in our stomach, which will be very useful. We'll be able to have four food buffs running all at the same time, which will be super nice. Uh, it does seem like our bridge over there is taking some severe damage, taking a good beating from the storm here. I want to get that upgraded into stone, so I think for now, before we dive into the really difficult stuff, let's just do a nice little stone farming run, get all the materials we need, and get that bridge upgraded into stone as our first project for today. And having grabbed that Fresh's Best perk, I actually don't need to immediately harvest these crops, I can just sort of leave them, they'll stay fresh as long as we need them to. Uh, until our moas are running low on food or until we actually want to harvest them. So I'm going to leave that for now and go out and grab a bunch of stone. I also crafted up another saddle so all of our moas are saddled up and ready to go whenever we need them. Well, yeah, let's take out, uh, who is this? 2-2? Two, two. Let's take 2-2 two, two out. Let's go grab some stone and get this bridge upgraded. And as I'm over here by this geyser, um, I'm also remembering that I'm going to need to craft our water borer. We're going to get that set up here, and that will give us all the water we need for the base, pretty much. Um, I can't even foresee us ever needing more than that amount of water. But in order to get that done, we're going to probably need a few more components, and uh, we'll have to think about what we'll need for that. But we're definitely going to need it because the organic material processor requires water in order to function. So that's another chore on our list for today. Uh, but for now, let's just keep on mining the stone up, get all that we can, and head on back, get that bridge upgraded, and start progressing. Amazing. And just like that, level 36, we're making huge progress on the levels. Um, you know, we have a ton of bacon, so we have that buff going for us persistently. And we also have Lone Wolf, which is another constant 15% buff to our experience. So we're just cranking through the levels now. Feeling very good about this, so let's keep it up. Absolutely beautiful. There we go. Now we don't have to worry about repairing this nearly as often. So, we got ourselves a nice little bridge. Um, I'm definitely thinking we're going to eventually want another bridge connecting us over to the Arctic biome, and then, of course, another bridge leading over to where we have our water wheels set up. Um, we're going to have to consistently be unclogging those with whatever happens to be gummed up in their works, so... It's going to be a little annoying having to go over there without a bridge, so that's definitely on the list as well. So, we have our 25 composite pastes all crafted up. Let's stick those inside of our fancy little electric furnace over here, get those going. And then, let's take a look at what we need for the water borer as well. So we're going to need an additional four composites, that's not too bad. Uh, six more electronics, however. So that's a total of 31 electronics. Uh, we have a jaguar. Happened to spawn on our island. Give him a taste of the platinum knife. So this is something else that I definitely think we need to work towards, this power creature deterrent. It's going to consistently require 1500 power, so we're going to need a little bit more electricity output to make sure that this stays up all the time whenever we need it. Um, but yeah, that's another thing that's 100% on our list of things to do for today. So we're going to get four more composites crafted up here and get those cooking up as well for us. So that's going to be all the electronics, or all the composites rather, that we need. So we're going to need a bunch of materials to get the electronics that we need. First, of course, is always going to be copper wire. 
uh, and then a ton of epoxies and organic resin. Now, epoxies are going to be much less of an issue as soon as we get our miasmic axe up and running, so that's why we're trying to rush it as soon as we can. We're going to need a ton of electronics, so that'll make life so much easier. But for now, we got to craft it the old-fashioned way, so that's sulfur and tree sap, and then these, of course, are wood and oxide. And we are running dangerously low on sulfur and oxide. I think we go out and do another run for those items, make sure we have a nice little stockpile for any more electronics that we're going to need down the line. That's going to be 50 more epoxies, all those organic scrapping up as well, but we're definitely going to need some more. So, let's take care of this jaguar. Looks like we got a double jaguar here. Nice shot. And let's carve up our spoils here and go out and get what we need. Also snag ourselves a little bacon while we're out and about. Alright, our inventory is totally full. Um, actually, let's just stick a little bit of this on the MOA. Grab that off the ground. And then we're going to head on back. So we're going to get some more organics crafting. Let's also maybe get a few more epoxies. 50 more epoxies. Alright. That should hopefully be enough for what we need, but let's check it out. Alright, so we need 31 more electronics. We have what we need to do that. Let's craft all of those up. And we also have a couple skill points left to spend. I'm going to put two more into long-lasting effects. And with one more point in this tree, we'll be able to get food pyramid. And as for our solo point, let's go ahead and grab Sweet Savory Satisfied. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock the organic residue cleaner. So we'll have that in our crafting list. We have a bird inside of our house right now. Um, Alright, I guess we have a trophy on our ceiling now. Very interesting. Um, but yeah, so with that taken care of, we have all the materials that we need for the water borer. Um, we're short just a tiny bit of steel for the chemistry bench. I'm crafting that up right now as we speak. And then organic residue cleaner. We need platinum sheaths and titanium ingots. So right now we have 18 platinum ingots. That's not very much. We definitely have enough uh, titanium here, so let's just stick that in there for now. Uh, but we're going to need 30 platinum sheaths. The platinum sheath that you get four per single platinum ingot actually so we are good on the amount of platinum let's unlock that so we need eight crafts of that that'll give us 32 so we have enough platinum no problem all right let's get all of that in there and with that taken care of the only thing that we're short on now is shaped obsidian so that is going to be a bit of a challenge to get. Let's go ahead, sleep the night away, and figure out what we're going to do about that obsidian in the morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm just taking a moment to watch the birds climb the waterfall. It is a lovely morning. Um, and as I was sitting here thinking about our next plan of attack, I remembered that in order to actually craft our miasmic tools, we're going to first need the foundry. So let's unlock that. Let's get the recipes for these research. So the pickaxe and the axe, definitely the two things we're going to want to focus on here. Um, but in order to actually craft them, of course, we're going to need some titanium, which we have in abundance. The distilled miasmic coating, which is crafted at the chemistry bench, so that's why we're prioritizing that. Um, but in order to actually craft any of that, we're going to need this thing set up. So that's 5 titanium plates, 15 concrete. So I believe every titanium plate is 3 titanium bars. Um, let's take a look at that. So titanium plate, yes. 
every one is three, so we're going to need 15 more titanium. Let's get those plates crafting up. We're also going to need eight more electronics. Let's get those crafting up too in here once we're done making a bunch of gold wire. And then 15 concrete mix. Fortunately, um, we have more than enough of that. So let's take our 15 out of there. All right, and we, with all the stuff that we'd had assembled ahead of time, we had enough for the foundry. So I'm going to craft this up, and this thing is absolutely massive. There is no way it's going to fit inside of our tiny little shack right here. So I'm going to have to make a base expansion in order to accommodate this thing. But I'm going to whip it out and just show you guys how ridiculously chunky this thing is. So I'm going to take this thing out, and you can see it is absolutely massive. Uh, we actually can get away with just sticking it in the middle of our floor here. Um, and you know what? I'm going to do it. <laughs> again, we are, once again, limited extremely on space, but hey, we had this floor space over here, we might as well make use of it. We can't actually walk around. Uh, to access our forges unless we go all the way around like that. So that's a little annoying. Um, but for the time being, let's just get that set up right there. When it comes to the material cleanser, the organic material cleanser, um, organic residue cleanser, that thing is also quite beefy. So when it comes to actually getting that up and running, we're 100% going to need to make an expansion. But for the time being, let's get this thing down. That's all taken care of. I have been procrastinating long enough. Let's get a little bit of offense together and let's make our way to the volcanic biome. I'm going to craft up a few more iron arrows here. We'll have 89. I'm also going to Make sure we repair this, because I think we're going to be using it quite a bit. I think this takes aluminum to repair. Yes. Let's grab one aluminum and get this repaired. Very nice. Now, there are some very powerful creatures out in the volcanic biome, and we went ahead and researched the trench shotgun. I'm starting to think, before we head out to the volcanic biome, let's get this just as a last resort in case anything truly nasty comes our way. All right, and just like that, we have ourselves our first gun of Prometheus. Let's get this down in our hotbar. Check this beautiful thing out. This beast is absolutely going to wreck whatever it comes in contact with. The only problem that we have right now, we don't have any bullets. So let's get to work on that. Now, the very annoying thing about the shotgun bullets is it actually requires copper to craft. So that's going to dip into our copper supply a little bit. Fortunately, we have some backup copper. We didn't turn all of it into wires. Um, it also takes epoxy. So these bullets are much more annoying to craft than the rifle rounds, which are only gunpowder and ammo casings. Um, but I do really like the trench shotgun, and I want to give it a whirl. So. Let's get the materials we need and get some of this ammo crafted up. So, gunpowder is just sulfur and charcoal. Very simple. Let's go ahead and get 50 of that. We're also going to need some ammo casings, so let's get 50 of those boys crafted up. And just like that, we got ourselves some ammunition. I love how quick this crafts. Very nice. Excellent. So we have our 50 bullets. Let's get this baby loaded up. Absolutely amazing. Now, as for the inaugural test of this, I think it's only fitting that we say hello to this Jaguar over here and see exactly what we're working with. Absolutely awesome. Man, I love the shotgun in this game. Alright, I am feeling good. So, we got our shotgun. We have everything that we need. The trouble with the volcanic biome, of course, is that it's extremely, extremely hot over there. So if we look at our character stats, with the armor that we currently have, we actually have 60% heat resistance. Um, 
I don't believe we have any fire resistance. Yeah, we have 0% fire resistance, so lava is still going to be extremely dangerous for us. Uh, but as far as heat goes, at least we're not completely, completely defenseless against that. Um, but in order to actually mine up the obsidian, we are going to need a sledgehammer. So there are a few sledgehammers. There's the obsidian sledgehammer. Obviously, we can't craft that because we don't have any obsidian. Um, but here's the iron sledgehammer. We're going to get this. Um, I don't really plan on using the sledgehammer too much. If we actually want to get a ton of obsidian, um, scoria, or clay, we can just set up a deep mine to take care of that. So I think the iron one is going to be sufficient for what we need here. Alright, and we have our iron sledgehammer. So, this very heavy weapon can be used to break rocks like scoria and obsidian. That's exactly what we need. I think we're going to wait for this storm to pass. Uh, maybe just sleep on one more day. I really don't want to be out at the volcanic biome in the middle of the night time. So, I think we're as prepared as we can be. I'm not looking forward to this. You know, the volcanic biome is definitely a scary place to be, but you know, we got to get that obsidian so we can get ourselves upgraded and get ourselves the miasmic pickaxe. So, I'm going to head out, check on our deep vining, deep vein mining and replace the biofuel cans, get all the copper and gold that we can from those and just have that be our chore for this day. Very nice. Got a huge amount of copper ore from that one. Alright, a nice amount of gold from here. Let's go grab our last copper. Alright, and with the predators taken care of, let's get our last batch of copper here. Very nice. Get this thing refueled, working for us again, and let's head back to base. Alright, we got everything delivered back at the base. We still have a few hours left in the day, and we're very close to leveling up. So I think I'm just going to spend the rest of today doing a bunch of random chores, gather a ton of wood. We're always short on wood, it seems like, so we'll get wood. I think I'm going to go try and find some more sulfur as well. Um, and let's just spend the rest of today doing a few more chores, getting some more resources, and preparing ourselves mentally for what we have in store for us tomorrow. And there's level 37. Amazing. Looks like we have a little visitor. Let's see how he likes the trench shotgun. For a little jump there, buddy. Well, let's get back to chopping down some wood, getting some sulfur, and I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. We have a heavy rain rolling in on us on this fateful morning. I'm not sure exactly what kind of omen that is for us, uh, but we're not going to let this hold us back. We're going to keep on pushing forward. We're going to head over to our grand staircase and see what, kind, see what kind of shape that thing is in. I'm a feeling it's going to be pretty battered, given all the heavy rain that we're facing right now. We're going to repair our staircase, head over to the cavern leading into the lava biome and make our way into danger. Alright, so our staircase is looking pretty battered. We can do a little repairs in the middle of this heavy rain and make our way forward. We will not be deterred. Just as we crest over the top of that hill, the rain is slowing. Things are getting quiet. A little ominous, if I'm being honest here. 
cave. So we've made it inside of the cave. Uh, at the end of this hallway, things are going to start heating up for us. And what I think I'm going to do is build a little bit of a ramp for our MOA. So we can quickly kind of navigate this uh, and get him to safety. Yet another frightening omen, ladies and gentlemen. This pig just fell into the lava and killed itself. We have a fearsome looking spider over there. Um, man, lava biome. Gotta love it. This lava broodling looks like it's not gonna leave without a fight. Just quickly take care of this thing. Oh, here it comes. Alright, we are on fire. Let's stay away from our MOA. This isn't good. I'm gonna pop this. Health potion, we're still on fire here. Okay, so we made it out of that. Um, that was a little frightening. <laughs> but, yeah, that is the fearsome nature of the lava biome. Once you catch on fire, you are in big trouble. Alright, so we have a little escape stairway. I'm just going to bring my MOA all the way to the mouth of the cave over here. Uh, keep building little staircases on the way. Um, but we're not going to take him into the lava biome proper because there is just so much terrain that you have to navigate around. Um, it is very difficult to get through with a mount unless you uh, build a ton of walkways for him. So we're just going to get him all the way to the edge of the cave so we can get out of here as fast as we can. But man, starting to get nervous. And here we are. This is the lava biome, the basalt expansion. I'm going to go ahead and park my MOA right here. All right, buddy. Hopefully I make it back. Now, let's go ahead and get the sledgehammer in our inventory. Um, I'm going to put it in slot two. We're not going to need any tree chopping out here. Uh, but welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the basalt expansion. I am... I guess we don't need to pin the point on our map because we have our MOA there. Uh, but as you can see, navigating around this biome on a mount is extremely difficult. You need to build ramps over all of these jagged rocks. Um, I have a plan of where I need to go. Uh, first things first, let's try and avoid those lava broodlings as much as possible. Um, I am going to get on my way and uh, progress toward the actual hot magma zone. And over there, we should be able to get ourselves some obsidian. And this place is barren, hot foreboding. Nothing good about it. Maybe some people out there like this biome, but I am just constantly on edge. The sounds that the volcano makes, the, the low rumbling, the ominous sort of wind that howls, the fact that you can get caught out by a horrible ash storm at any second. It is dangerous out here. I do actually have a pretty good knowledge about this side of the lava biome. Um, later on in the game, we're definitely going to want to come out here and search for a tree that gives us red exotics when harvested. Uh, but in my main profile, I actually did build a walkway, a ramp for my MOAs, so I am able to navigate this area on a mount, um, progress pretty smoothly and quickly to the place where my tree is located in that map. Um, I think this is a spot where a tree could potentially spawn. Unfortunately, we didn't get that lucky. Ours is probably much, much deeper into the map here. But yeah, I'm just going to keep progressing in this direction. Over behind those ominous looking rocks is our destination. Oh my goodness. 
Oh my goodness, I just remembered. I left my oxygen tank in the base. That is really not good. I guess we could turn back, but at this point, we're so close. I think I'm going to risk it. I don't know if any oxide actually spawns in this biome. I don't think I've ever seen it. We need to be quick, we need to be fast, and we need to get out of here. I thought I was being nice and strategic, refilling my oxygen bottle before I went out on this mission, but if you leave the oxygen bottle behind, it's not going to do you any good. Oh, and I am stuck. <laughs> do a quick unstuck there. I thought I was being strategic, refilling my oxygen bottle before setting off on this mission, but look at me forgetting the oxygen bottle. So here we are, we are at the lava area. This, I believe, is Scoria. Yep, that's Scoria. We need to find obsidian. Do some very dangerous parkour across the lava here. So here's the obsidian. I hope that that guy doesn't aggro, because I think if you attack near him, he will go aggro. Alright, there's the obsidian. We only need a few. I'm just going to grab a couple more here and we are going to get out. I'm very sketched out by this guy here. Okay, looks like the... Looks like the sledgehammer is not going to trigger his aggro. Grab a little bit more here. Stamina depleted. Okay, 41 obsidian. That is everything I'm going to grab right now. We don't have much time here. Let's try and make it back. And we have pneumonia. We have low oxygen. At least we have food, but things are not great for us right now. These rocks can be a little difficult to navigate. We do have ramps here. I think just in the essence of time, I'm going to just place a ramp and get out of here as fast as we can. We have a death wing on our tail. Let's just try and avoid him. We'll get our shotgun out if he pursues. Yeah, but it's times like these that plyometrics really comes into play. If we didn't have this plyometric skill, we would be in much worse shape here. Alright, we officially have low oxygen. The debuff that this is is minus 10% experience gained. Not a huge issue for us right now. Alright, we're getting so close. I think we're going to make it out of this, but we're not in the clear yet. We get our ramps here. Again, in the essence of time. Alright, here's the cave. Let's get on our MOA and book it. Coupe, let's go. Coupe, let's go. We need to move. I'm taking damage from my low oxygen. We do have health potions that we can use to heal through some of this. Thank goodness we made these ramps, because otherwise we would be in serious trouble trying to jump our way out of here. Okay, we made it out. We need to find some oxide. Is there any oxide up here? We need oxide. Our MOA is out of stamina. I'm not seeing any oxide. I'm going to pop a health potion, get back on our MOA, and get down the staircase because I don't see any oxide up here. This is awful. Okay, don't panic. We're going to slowly make our way down the staircase here. I see some oxide nodes. I think we made it out of there. Let's 
just consume this immediately. All right. Wow. That was very, very stressful. I've never been more happy to see Oxite. Oh my gosh. All right. Well. That could have been much less stressful if I had actually remembered to grab my oxygen canister. Uh, but for the time being, let's just get that in there. Take a deep breath. And get the heck on home. Oh my gosh. We have made it. Wow. That was an adventure. Oh my goodness, I am so glad to be home. Get me my oxygen can right now. Where is that thing? You. You. Get in my inventory. Oh my gosh, okay. Well. <sighs> the reason we went out there was for this obsidian. So, the spoils of our adventure here, let's get it cooking up. Every two obsidian is gonna turn into a shaped obsidian, so we have about 20 of those. I think we only needed eight for the chemistry bench. Or, not the chemistry bench. Oh, we only needed five shaped obsidian for the organic residue cleaner, but we have it. We have our obsidian. That was way more stressful than it needed to be. Okay, let's get the titanium. Get that in here. And once we have our shaped obsidian, we have all of the ingredients that we need for our water borer, our organic residue cleaner, and our chemistry bench. All right, and in the interest of getting these big, beefy new crafting benches down, we're gonna need to expand our base a little bit here. So I'm gonna craft up a few more walls and floors, and we're gonna make an expansion here. All right, just a little extra two by two here. Let's get some of these benches reorganized. All right, so we've opened up the place a little bit here. I made this little two by two. I stuck the foundry back in this corner. And we have a little bit more room on either side to move some other things, but I think with this amount of space, we should be good for now. Uh, let's go ahead and look into crafting up our new stuff here. Let's go ahead and grab our beautiful shaped obsidian. We only need five. All right, and I think we have everything we need here. Let's go ahead and get all of this crafting. Chemistry bench. Fabricator. And we're short just a little bit of steel for the iron, for the water borer. We have some more. And there is the water borer. Awesome. So just about a minute, we'll have all of these things crafted up. All right, and just like that, we have all three of these beauties crafted up. So... Let's take a look at how massive this thing is. Yeah, it is a beast. So we're once again going to need to stick something in the middle of the floor here. I'm just going to place it right here for now. At least we have a little bit more leeway on either side. We can still get around even with that giant thing in the middle here. Let's also place down our chemistry bench. Right there for now. And now it's time to get our water borer down. So I'm going to head over to that geyser that we've been eyeballing. Oh, there it goes right now. Inviting us over there. So let's go ahead and place this water borer down. Um, I'm going to need to draw a power line from our water wheels over here. All the way over to the water borer. So let's go ahead and get that taken care of. Alright. Beautiful. Now let's get this thing placed down. Amazing, all right. Let's get this hooked up. 1,000 power, and it's gonna give us 2,000 water. So now we gotta drag a water line all the way back from this thing. So let's go ahead and get that back to the base. And just like that, we have water at the base. 
That little overhanging 2x2 two two is definitely a little sketchy looking, but it gets the job done. So I'm going to pull our water line underneath our floorboards here. Let's get that over to the organic residue cleaner. Excellent, and just like that, this thing is hooked up to water. Let's also get this and the uh, chemistry bench powered up too. And there we go. Everything's powered up. So it used to be, I think I've already explained this, but it used to be that um, benches would constantly require power whether you were using them or not. But thankfully to a recent update, um, they only use power and water when you're actually using the machine. So we're fine to have everything plugged in and just idling um, as we're not using it. But yeah, we are ready. The very, very last thing that we're going to need uh, to make our miasmic tools, of course, is some more platinum and then the distilled miasmic coating. So the distilled miasmic coating, that's another thing that you can only get in the swamp biome. And basically, you just need to hunt animals in this biome and every once in a while they will drop um, some miasmic items. You bring those back to your chemistry bench. And as you can see, crystallized miasma, you process one of those into distilled miasmic coating. So in the morning, I think we're going to make another trip over to the swamp biome and see if we can't get ourselves some crystallized miasma. Good morning, everybody. We just took care of a little unwanted visitor there, and we are heading on over to the swamp biome. As I was making my way back to the swamp biome, I found some yeast in the grasslands. So, apparently I was right in my initial thinking that yeast maybe does spawn in this biome and not just in the swamp. So, I guess I stand corrected. All right, we have made it back to the swamp lands. It is as green and misty as always. Now, in order to get crystallized miasma, you can pretty much kill any a swamp creature and it has a chance of dropping it so we're just gonna go around see if we can find some nice easy things to kill this is not so easy but we do have a little bit of a way to take care of him let's see if he drops us any Okay, so we dropped some volatile substance. We don't need that right now. Uh, acidic glands and crystallized miasma are both things um, that can be processed. There's some infected bark, too. Um, I'm not going to actually take the acidic glands. I'm only going to take the miasma and that bark. Um, but you definitely want to take these uh, miasmic items and put them on your mount. If you keep them on yourself, you'll take damage over time. You could see that debuff in the bottom left corner. Um, so when you pick him up, let's avoid that needle or let's get away from him as quick as possible. <laughs> um, yeah, when you pick those items up, put them in your mount's inventory so you won't take damage. We just need to get a few of these things. Uh, we don't need too many. So we're just going to find a couple easy creatures, pick them off, and get home with our spoils. First little swamp rat there. All right. a huge waste of ammo, but hey, we got him. So here's that debuff I was talking about. Periodically take poison damage. The more uh, diseased items that you actually carry, the higher that debuff becomes. So you can have, you know, 200, 300% and you'll be taking a ton of damage. So definitely make sure you get that out of your inventory and on your mount. A little bit cleaner that time. And just like that, we have a pretty decent amount of crystallized miasma. We have 44. 
That's going to be way more than we need right now. So let's take our haul and get back to the base. And avoid that guy. Alright. So we're going to make 44 distilled miasma coatings. Way more than we actually need right now, but that's very nice. starting to feel the absence of a creature deterrent even on our little moat island over here, so that's definitely something that we're going to want pretty soon. Alright, and with all of this distilled miasmic coating crafted up, we are ready to get ourselves the miasmic axe. Oh my gosh, that feels good. And then we just need a little bit more carbon fiber and we can get the miasmic pickaxe as well, but for the time being, Let's just give this baby a test. I'll show you. So we did actually grab a little bit of infected bark as well, just from uh, Animal Drop. If we stick this in here, you can see every single one infected bark is five epoxy. Five. This is so, so, so powerful. And if we use this miasmic axe to cut down some trees, I'll show you just how much epoxy you can get using that thing. Alright, so we cut down one single tree. One single tree. And we got 155 infected bark. We are taking damage from that, so we're going to want to get back to the base and deposit that. Um, but 155 infected bark is 775 epoxies. Just like that. Just like that. And that's more epoxy than we're going to need for a long, long time from a single tree. So, basically, the miasmic axe and the organic residue cleaner make epoxy completely, completely trivial. Um, yeah, that feels absolutely amazing. Alright, I think that is going to wrap it up for today's episode. We had a very dangerous experience, we made some massive progress. We are ready to really start cranking out electronics now that we have epoxy pretty much permanently taken care for us. So I think starting in the next episode, we're going to really look into getting some serious electric um, power supply set up. We're going to get some solar panels. We're going to get deep electric drills going. We are ready for some serious industry here. So I am excited. I am ready. And I am looking forward to what the next chapter holds. And thank you everybody for watching. Thank you everybody who has subscribed and been subscribing. I'm extremely happy to see how much people are enjoying the series in the comments. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing this series for all of you. So, thank you for watching. And until next time, goodbye.